today we are going to be discussing meal planning because I think meal planning is such a hot topic. Especially when people are new, they're like, give me a meal plan. Just tell me what to do already, right? Like I think it's really tempting um, to want to just ask for a, a, like a prescription almost like we're used to getting from the doctor that just says, do this on day one, do this on day two, do, do this on day three. So I think that's a pretty common question that I get either on email or in our group here or in messenger. Um, people are just like, I don't know what to do. This is so hard. Can you just tell me already? So I want to just tackle the subject head on. So meal planning. Why isn't there a dirty, lazy keto meal plan? Have you ever wondered? Because you've never seen one. Not that I've sponsored, maybe some other person, I don't know. But I have never endorsed a dirty, lazy keto meal plan. And it's for a reason. And I would like to talk about that a little bit. Because you know, I put all my information in here. So I'm gonna head over to uh, why I don't offer a set meal plan. And I'm gonna go through some of these items here. Um, but I talk about activity level. <laughs> I knew I'd make you laugh with this one. Uh, activity level, like if you are a super active person and you're always running around and you're busy, 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 then guess what? A meal plan that's like a standard one size fits all, it's not gonna apply to you because when you're more active, you get to eat more, right? It's just like a common sense. Your body is a machine. So if you're off like dancing and square dancing and um, doing aerobics and hiking and walking the dog, playing tennis, running, whatever it is you're, do you're doing, if you're a super active person, you're gonna be burning up those net carbs um, at the gym or swimming or whatever you do, you're gonna be burning through your net carbs a lot faster than someone who's more sedentary. So, that's one reason why I don't think a meal plan fits everyone because of that simple reason. Now you might be thinking, okay, yeah, whatever, Stephanie. <laughs> I still want one. <laughs> I understand, but I'm gonna keep arguing with you about why I'm not gonna give you one, okay? I will give you tips. We'll cover that today. I will give you meal planning tips, but I'm not gonna give you a prescription of what to eat. Um, this is, you remember these like from the nursery from when people had babies it says boy or girl congratulations and the reason i i wanted to show these is depending on your gender you're gonna burn through your net carbs and have a different type of metabolism now we all know the gentlemen they just lose weight faster totally not fair just putting that out there um, and us ladies we do tend to lose weight a lot slower than men and it's not our fault it's just a victim of our genetics. Um, I think it has something to do with biologically, men have more muscle, they just do, they have more testosterone. And so therefore, more muscle, more testosterone, they burn calories a little bit quicker. And no, I don't count calories, but it's just a biological fact that women do lose weight a little slower. So that's another reason why I don't like to offer a prescription meal plan. Okay, I have a couple more reasons why. I'm just gonna get these out of the way because I know you're wondering why. Please give it to me. Here's another tricky one, right? Hormones, ah! Oh! It's like the worst word on the planet when you're my age. According to where you're at in your cycle, according to where you're at in your age with menopause or hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, um, our, our hormones play a huge role in our ability to lose weight or keep it off. And I know everybody is like, girl, <laughs> preach, right? I know all the ladies out there are like, whoop, 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 right? I know that you get that, okay? Because it's just the truth. Um, you know, as we get older, our bodies change. And when we're younger and, you know, during our 20s and all those good years that we complained about, I mean, you could just lose weight a lot faster. So keep in mind that medication that you're on, hormones, um, just where you're at in terms of menopause or your own cycle really does play into your ability to lose weight and how many net carbs you're able to eat. So the person who's super active, right? They may get to eat a lot more net carbs than, than some of us who are suffering maybe from menopause, right? And that's just the bottom line. That's why 
a meal plan, one size fits all, does not work. And it never will. Um, I know it's tempting for a lot of people, if they don't know what to eat, they start reaching for things like this. They're like, oh, well, I'll just have a meal replacement bar. We've all been there. You know, you're hungry and you're starving and you get hangry. You know that hangriness? And you're like, I gotta eat something right now. Um, and then you just start turning to quick meal replacement therapy. That's what I like to call it. Now, this reminds me a lot of when I was a kid and we, um, you guys may, maybe you remember this, but they had all these like shakes and stuff. It wasn't Quest, but we had like, I don't even know the names, Nutrisystem shakes and I don't know what the one was chocolate and, and our mothers would tell us that's what you have to eat in order to lose weight. You just have these three times a day and we would all get suckered into it, right? Because we were so desperate, we didn't know what to eat. So we kept turning toward like frozen meals, right? We would sign up for plans. We would eat meal replacement bars or do shakes. And I know it's very tempting and there's nothing wrong with those foods, okay? If you can fit these in your mac macros and your daily carb count, then you know, if that's important to you, go for it. But here is the danger in my opinion. If you are only having Quest bars, if you're only having Kind bars, if you're only having uh, Costco um, Kirkland brand protein bars, which are all fine suggestions, fiber one bars, you're never learning how to cook. You're never learning how to make good choices. Do you see where I'm going with this? So giving you a prescription meal plan with a bunch of this kind of stuff, sure, it might work for like a week. You're right, it might. But then after a while, you're gonna get all mad and be like, Stephanie, I don't wanna eat this crap anymore. And the next time you go buy a McDonald's or I don't know, you go to a lunch meeting and there's actual food there, you're gonna just go crazy. You see what I mean? I hope this makes sense because I don't want you thinking there is a magic answer. There is a magic way to eat. You have to do X, Y, Z. You have to have this for breakfast, this for lunch in order to lose weight. You know, it just couldn't be further from further from the truth. So, you know, all these fancy drinks that are already pre-made, um, you know, maybe not this one, but I know Premier at Costco, a lot of people enjoy those. And those are delicious once in a while. But if you're depending on things like this to get you through every single day at lunch or every single breakfast, that might, for me, set off an alarm bell. Because, you know, in order to make this work, I want you to lose weight permanently, just like I did. 140 pounds and I've kept it off like seven years. I'm coming up on eight years at Christmas. I didn't do that by, you know, eating low carb protein bars every day for breakfast or lunch or having a meal replacement shake. I did not follow a, you know, a set guidelines of what to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and a little chart, check things off. I think those are just very dangerous crutches. Um, so I just want to be very upfront with that. And that's why I don't offer a meal plan for Dirty Lazy Keto. And I don't think anybody else should either. Because we all know that, uh, hopefully you can see this number here, according to what age you are, right, um, you might need a different type of plan. And no one is customizing this for you. This is something you have to figure out as you get older, what's gonna work for you. Um, I want to empower you instead of punish you. I wanna empower you with ways that you can meal plan and those are some of the strategies that I wanna continue talking about today. Because you can do this. It's really not that hard. I know it seems hard at first and scary, um, but once you get the hang of it, I think it's just gonna flow for you and you'll be surprised and say, duh, like why didn't I do this sooner? Like this is making so much sense to me. So I want you to go through that introductory period where you're feeling maybe a little frustrated and and curious and nervous and afraid, because those are good feelings. That means you're learning. I always feel like when I go through those moments of anxiety, that to me shares that I'm like outside the box. Like I'm in out of my comfort zone and I'm learning. So if you're feeling that way and you're trying to do some meal planning, then you are doing the right thing, okay? So trust the process, I promise you. I'm um, on page 258. I did want to go to page 258 with my glasses on. There's something I wanted to share with you. 
And this is entirely lazy keto, get started losing weight while breaking the rules. Um, and this is what I call the fast lane to weight loss. I know a lot of you listening want this to happen fast, right? You're like, just tell me what to do. So it's very enticing for all of us, let's be real, to want to take like a shortcut. And I get it, I get it. And here on page 258, I talk about these fast lanes to weight loss and why I don't think they're a good idea because for what we just talked about. Um, I talked about fast lanes to weight loss. These are things that probably aren't gonna help in the long term. Um, contests at work and challenges. How many of your offices have done like a 30 day weight loss challenge, right? Or you watch them on TV. Here's the thing, they don't really work forever. They work for like 30 days until you win. Um, another one is distraction, keeping busy, changing your environment. Uh, but third is mimicking. And that's what's appropriate to what we're talking about here with meal planning. And when I talk about mimicking on page 258, I say copying someone else's prescribed meal plan instead of learning to independently prepare foods and make educated choices using prepackaged shakes, bars, purchased meals, or eating only one food for a prescribed amount of time, such as the egg fast. <laughs> Don't even get me started about the dreaded egg fast. Uh, I know I'll be getting letters, emails, I know you guys will get mad at me, but I, I need to tell you the truth. These are not ways to lose weight permanently. Um, following someone else's meal plan is not the way to go. We need to get this figured out for you according to your age, your activity level, your gender, where you're at with your hormones, um, and of course, where you're starting at in terms of how much you weigh today. Now, when I weighed 289 pounds, I got to eat a lot differently than like today being 158 pounds. So I had to adjust what I ate as I lost weight. So that wouldn't make sense for me then to follow a meal plan. Does that make sense to you? Because it's different, right? Like the amount of net carbs I eat has really drastically changed along my journey. And I suspect some of you listening might be like, cause that's how I was. I was like, oh, you mean, you know, I used to be able to eat 40, 50 carbs, net carbs a day, but now that I've lost 40, 50 pounds, I have to adjust that, right? Like it didn't occur to me to do that until I would hit a plateau. And then I'd say, oh, I guess things have changed. And that's normal. That's part of the process. So let me go over some specific examples, because I know that's why you're here, about how you can meal plan in a healthier way. And what I mean by healthier, it's not somebody else's plan, not a contest, none of that, right? Okay, so let's get to some very specific strategies. Now the first one seems obvious enough, but I'm just gonna point it out. You're gonna need to have your grocery list and not a blank one like, like, like mine, but have a list and check it twice and use it. And if you're not using you know, the old school pen and paper, Use your phone. Um, a friend of mine told me about sharing a digital file on your notes on your iPhone and your whole family can share that folder and type in what ingredients or what foods someone needs to pick up at the store. That way you're always communicating. A less fancy method of communicating about what you want to have for dinner is to take a picture of the fridge. This one totally helps. I can't believe I hadn't thought of this one before. But if I'm at the store or my husband's at the store, take a picture and send it to the other person. That way they can actually see what foods might be missing. And you have an idea in your head when you're at the store about maybe what should I make for dinner this week? I think I'll make this, I think I'll make that. But then if you get home and you're out of key ingredients, that can be really frustrating. Um, and then in line with your grocery list that I recommend that you keep, I think having some mandatory staples in your fridge at all times and in your pantry is a good idea. Now what that is for you is gonna be different for me. So like at my house, we have this huge freezer. We put cauliflower, oh my gosh, frozen meat when it's on sale. We have cauliflower bags and bags of frozen cauliflower every time I catch a good sale or frozen Brussels sprouts or if I make double of a food, I'll freeze extra portions for later. Um, 
But so for me, it's going to look different from at your house. But either way, keep a very specific grocery list and stick to it. I think it will help you. You'll be surprised. Just that little change, that small little adjustment in your routine about really sticking to it and bringing it with you can make a huge world of difference when you're trying to meal plan. So the question really is then, what is going to be on your list? Type that in the comments. Because guess what? Your ideas might help inspire someone else. What your staples are for your pantry could inspire someone else. And that's what this is all about. Like we're here to help one another. This is a community of Dirty Lazy Keto. I don't have all the answers because I know you have a lot to share as well. So please share what uh, staples are on your grocery list. All right, I wanna move on to a next strategy, cutting board. And the reason why I chose a cutting board to share with you is for meal planning, one of the things that makes me successful is prepping ingredients all at once. And I do this early in the week. I've shared with you guys on Monday is when I'm most committed to my health. On Friday, I am the least committed, <laughs> right? Like during the week, I lose all my motivation and I get like, I'm tired. So if you're like me, pick a day of the week that you tend to be more motivated about eating right and do a lot of heavy lifting on that day. So on my, um, usually Mondays for me, that's when I do my grocery shopping and that's when I start prepping ingredients. I'll start washing vegetables. I'll start marinating meat. I'll cut up chicken into small pieces. I will, I don't know, season meats that I wanna be seasoned. I'll wash and cut up celery and bell peppers and all those good things. Because if it's ready, guess what? You're gonna be so much more likely to eat healthy and make a healthy meal if you have the ingredients already prepped. Seems so simple when I say it out loud and then you're like, I should do that. So in line with uh, prepping ingredients, everyone's like, what's that? Is it popcorn? I wish. Uh, this is a giant bag of cauliflower. So when I'm prepping for the week and doing my meal planning, I don't recommend making an individualized portion. Why? Because then you're hungry like the next meal and you don't have anything to eat. So when you're cooking healthy ingredients that are on your grocery list, cook large amounts of them simple. I will cook, you know, two pounds, five pounds, whatever of cauliflower. I will wash and prep broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts. I'll do celery, bell peppers. If I'm going to make a salad or another, you know, low carb type of thing that I can eat a ton of, I don't make a tiny salad. First of all, who eats tiny salads? I don't eat tiny anything. Um, but anything I make in general, I make a huge amount. And I know that's been something I've heard feedback on about the Dirty Lazy Keto cookbooks. Folks have said to me, can you please make recipes for one person? And I'm like, no, nope, not going to. You know why? Even if I'm just cooking for myself, I'm gonna cook like five servings or six servings. I'm gonna triple it and quadruple it because I want to have leftovers for later, right? I want to make a giant salad that lasts for days, not little tiny salad just for tonight's dinner and then tomorrow at lunch I'm starving to death. I just happened to grab these because I had them on hand, um, but I hope that that makes sense to you. The same could be applied to chicken, to meats, uh, to any soups that you're making. It's very easy to try to prep all at once because if you're going to get all the dishes dirty, right? Might as well get something more out of it than just that teeny amount of food. I also think when you're cooking, um, you should make large amounts of food that can be used again and again and again. So even if it's not like a salad that you're having, like I said, one day for dinner, the next day for lunch, that's the same thing. Another trick I like to do is to recycle the ingredients. So for example, we talked about cauliflower here. If I was to steam up a giant amount of cauliflower, you know, one day that could be a side dish. The next day I could use it to make twice baked potatoes. 
The third day I could use it to make a pizza crust and so on and so forth. And I know that takes a little bit more planning and a little bit more experience with Dirty Lazy Keto. So I do want to let you know that in the cookbook, and I've talked to you about this last week, on page 16, this is the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. On page 16 are these fun little icons that I created where I assign them to recipes to try to help make them more helpful to you. And one of the new icons that you'll find is the reboot icon. And I'll move it up close so you can see. Whoa, getting dizzy. So it's called the reboot icon. And what that means, according to the icon list, I'll read you the exact definition. A reboot recipe, and it has a symbol like a recycle symbol where the arrows go round and round. Um, a reboot recipe is a twofer. You make extra and you use part for another meal. So it's just like I was talking about, right? And an example of this in the book, I'll share with you. We already talked about cauliflower, right? So here's another example. Um, on page 148, I share a recipe for piggy bank pork chops. Isn't that a fun picture? Piggy bank pork chops. And then leftover pork chops, or doubling the recipe, can then be used with, um, it's very easy to figure this out because I have the symbol on the page. You can use that same ingredient, the leftovers, for payday pork fried rice. And this is on page 122, and I'll show you the picture. Doesn't that look good? I love making fried rice. It's so easy, so easy, and you can eat a ton of it, which is also very important to me. <laughs> I'm a big eater, remember? I don't do anything in small portions. Um, so I hope that that helps you. You know, I think that you have a lot of ideas as well. Um, think about what foods you make already that you could just start doubling and tripling and quadrupling your recipe so that you could make it again. Like, do you have any suggestions for the group? Because I know that you're thinking of them. You're like, I kind of already do that. So you already know these ideas. It's just a matter of getting that grocery list out and maybe making it more official. So what are some ideas that you have in terms of making an ingredient, making extra, and then rebooting it to recycle it in a new meal the next day? Let's see what some ideas are. I'm going to read them as they pop up. Yes, it's very easy to do a meal and then do leftovers, right? So that could be a way to stretch it out, like one meal on Sunday. You could do the same one the next day, the same one the next day. Or you could recycle the ingredients to make it a fresh meal, like we talked about, like using cauliflower to make a pizza crust. That way people aren't so savvy as to what you're doing. Now, I do realize this is not maybe as easy as it sounds. Um, that was one of the ideas that I had when I put together the Dirt Cheap Cookbook, because I knew this is a struggle for most people. They're like, well, you know, I might cook once a week, but then I don't know what to do with the ingredients, and I don't want to make too much. It's just the two of us, blah, blah, blah. So that way, I put that icon on those assigned recipes. Um, and just to, you know, throw out a couple more while you're thinking, because I know these are going to come to you. But you could use chaffles, right? Chaffles in the morning. And then you could make hamburgers with the chaffles at dinner. Cheeseburgers, even. And um, let's say you were making fajita bowls for dinner one night, like with grilled chicken. Then the next day, you could use that same ingredient to make a, a, like a fajita chicken salad. That one's kind of a, eh. Or you could do tacos. Or you could make enchiladas. I think Mexican's really easy. Um, what if you made hamburgers one night for dinner and you're doing like a lettuce wrapped hamburger? The next day you could chop up the extra hamburgers that you made and make a spaghetti sauce and serve that over zoodles. So are you starting to catch on? I think it's a lot easier once you start practicing. It's one of those things in theory where you're like, you got to tell me what to do. But then you're all, I can do that. That's not that hard. And then you start getting the hang of it. So I'm really excited to hear what ideas you have. Um, I want the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook to give you some inspiration if you do need help. But I think you probably know all the answers already. It's just a matter of committing to them and getting the right ingredients on hand and then maximizing the day you're most energetic. Because <laughs> let's face it, that's not every day.
my whole life I've been taught fat is wrong, fat is evil, you know, I have to eat whole grains. I've actually had someone tell me I would be malnourished if I didn't start eating toast. <laughs> I'm oh, like, wow. I don't think so. I don't yeah. need toast to survive. But even, you know, a lot of critics will say, oh, you shouldn't eat eggs or fat because that causes high cholesterol. People tell me, oh, you can't lose weight if you're snacking between meals or eating big portions. And even people say, oh, you can't have dessert um, and lose weight. And I set out to prove all those people wrong. And I did. You so did. ha ha, ha ha, <laughs> ha ha, ha my way works too, Mr. Yeah. Critic. Hello, it's Stephanie Laska, author and creator of Dirty Lazy Keto. I know many of you have been enjoying all of my books and healthy recipes and tricks and tips for how I lost 140 pounds. Well, I want to let you know about a new book that's coming out. It is called The Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. Isn't that the best name ever? I found so many people use that's expensive as an excuse for not wanting to maybe get started with changing their health. Well, I'm the first one to tell you as a lady that's always on a tight budget, you do not have to buy anything expensive or specialty items or even go to fancy stores. You can do Dirty Lazy Keto at whatever stores or whatever budget that you're currently on and I'm gonna help you. What is so different about your book from all the other diet books? Well, I think mainly there's no judgment about your lifestyle. I think that's key just as a big umbrella term about dirty, lazy keto. There's no judgment. If you want to drink Diet Coke or beer or put sugar-free sweetener in your coffee or even drink like sugar-free Red Bull, like do it. You know, this is your life. You need to be able to have lunch meat or peanut butter, you know, shredded cheese, a protein bar. These are normal foods. And my family, we eat fast food. We shop at Walmart. We don't I don't buy expensive, you know, fancy pants type ingredients that are going to blow my family's budget. So that's that's one thing. I think that Dirty Lazy Keto is more affordable. I think it's flexible. I think it's doable. Um, like I mentioned, other diet books, you know, keto included, they're very black and white. It's always set up as a do or die situation where you have to follow the rules and you have to eat all this stuff. And if you don't, it doesn't work. Well. I think there's another way. So no thanks, buddy. I don't want, <laughs> that's what I like, no thanks, buddy. I don't want any of that. Um, my book is the opposite of all of that. I think that losing weight is not just about cutting carbs. We're not putting anything in our cookbooks that you can't buy at Walmart and that's affordable um, yeah. because that's how we operated. At times, one of us was not working or both of us, there were times where both of us were out of, of a job. And we had, you know, very limited funds. So for me, it was important to recommend the same types of foods that I eat. You know, it's all real food, nothing fancy.